open up the uh, DJI Go app. I'm not connected to the Phantom, uh, so I can make the screen recording, but I'm pretty sure I can get to the settings I need. So then you go to the camera and the gear uh, right above the recording button. And then we go to, we'll start with color. I always shoot with a log profile, and that's because it's a little uh, flatter. Um, I don't like to use any of the, especially the vivid profile, uh, because it, it, it tends to, to uh, crush your blacks and oversaturate. And I can do that kind of stuff in post, so it gives you much more leeway when you shoot a little bit uh, more flat. Uh, so I use the log profile. And then my white balance. I used to start, uh, I used to shoot with the uh, white balance uh, set to auto, but um, I've learned that um, that's not the best thing to do because your white balance can change so much. It's much different than, than a land-based camera where you you have a little bit more control over the scene or the scene's not going to change that drastically. And what happens is if you're shooting white auto white balance and your camera is shooting, say, straight forward, and then you quickly point down, uh, the whole color cast of the shot will be different, usually a little bit cooler, and you'll notice that all of a sudden it'll take a few seconds and that shot will warm up. And that's because that auto white balance is correcting uh, using the new information vis-a-vis -vis, you know, where the camera's pointing to get uh, a, as, as neutral as it can a white balance. And what you're going to have is a shot where it starts out very blue and all of a sudden there's this weird color cast to warm. In the middle of your shot, and that that just looks really unprofessional. So, I um I always shoot with a uh, manual white balance setting. Go to custom. This is set to 5,000 K. Um, I tend to shoot. This was set for a shot I did not too long ago, uh, earlier today. That was full on sun, beautiful bright sunny day. Um, this is probably a little bit cool for some people, but I've learned that the Phantom 3's camera tends to shoot a, a bit warm. Um, so I like to kick it down just a notch to about 5,000 K and that still gives you plenty of, uh, uh, warm colors, but it's more of a neutral, uh, white balance for full on, uh, sunlight. Now that, you know, this will vary from time to time is depending on the daylight and when you're shooting. So you can always use the, uh, settings for sunny, uh, and the settings for cloudy. Those are two extremes, um, that you can use. But the good thing about that is either sunny or cloudy. Um, or custom, it's locked in. You know, no matter what uh, the camera turns and points at, that the the, uh, the whole image will not uh, color shift on you, and give you some kind of nightmare to correct it in post. If you actually tried to, you know, correct that color shift from a, a warm shot that all of a sudden goes really cold. Um, but uh, the important thing is, the, the biggest lesson of this is, is is do not use auto white balance because it it, it corrects and shifts and changes as the camera turns and points uh, with a manual white balance or one of the presets for cloudy or, or sunny, uh, at least it's locked in. So that's real important. And then uh, most importantly here is style, the bottom lower left of this menu. The default comes up about like this, but I go to the custom setting. And then under custom, I've got my sharpness at negative two, contrast negative three, and saturation negative two. The reason I have contrast, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, sharpness at negative two is by default the Phantom at zero, or even if above that, plus one or plus two, it is way too sharp. I mean, it doesn't look realistic. It's over sharpened, I think, in my opinion. Um, the Phantom 3 uh, is, a, is a good camera, okay, but in my opinion, it's not a great camera. So you've got to kind of work around some of its weaknesses, and, and uh, one of its, or two of its big, biggest weaknesses is that uh, it produces more and, um, and aliasing. It's, it's, it can be pretty bad, and more is that pattern that you see, especially on, on the rooftops where there's uh, a tiny fine pattern like shingles that's exactly the same. You'll see this dancing sort of pattern. Um, in a field of lines of plowed, you know, crops that are in a straight line. When the camera turns, you'll see this strange dancing pattern. Uh, and then aliasing is uh, predominantly when you see, like, say, fencing in your shots or power lines. Um, instead of a nice continuous bent line or a nice continuous line, you'll see these tiny little stair steps where it almost looks like it's pixelizing instead of showing you this nice, consistent, uh, continuous line. You get these little stair-stepped chunks. And sharpening 
at zero and on up makes this just terrible. Um, so I kicked mine down to a negative two and I found that this is the sweet spot. Negative one is still pretty bad, I think. But uh, negative three is way too much. I think negative three started to take away what appeared to be uh, taking away some of the uh, finer details, say like a group of trees. A group of trees, uh, the tops of those trees were starting to look like a solid clumped image versus separate trees with separate leaves and that kind of thing. So um, sharpness at negative two, I think I'm, I'm, I've been able to achieve some pretty decent results with that. Contrast at negative three, that goes back to getting the flattest image possible. Um, there's still plenty to work with, but um, again, if you shoot something and your blacks are crushed or your whites are blown out, there's nothing you can do about that in post. Once it's done, it's done. So this is a good safeguard against that. Saturation at negative two, uh, because the Phantom shoots, um, the Phantom 3 professional camera shoots with plenty of saturation, so don't be afraid to kick that down a couple. Again, that helps tremendously in post because if something's oversaturated, it, it, it's a little more difficult to get that saturation back down without affecting you know the rest of the image uh, adversely or having to do major amounts of post-color correction work that you just wouldn't have to do if, if your saturation was, was a little lighter when you shot it. So those are my camera settings uh, that work best. Please post comments below if you have any questions. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, please subscribe and thank you so much for watching.